Hey, did you lose power during the last big storm during December when a lot of people were out of power? Are you one of the ones that were just left in the dark? You weren't able to cook. You didn't have any lights. You might have had a flashlight or two or something. You're scrambling around trying to figure out what to do. You, obviously, you can't leave your home. You're getting blasted with a winter storm and blizzard conditions outside. People are stuck on the roads, not where you want to be, right? I mean, you want to make sure you're staying in the security of your own home. Well, here's a few tips that you all really need to really ponder on scoring if you were in that situation. Now, if you are a prepper, more than likely you do have a lot of these things I'm going to be talking about. If you are new to prepping, or if you just want to be secure and you want to make sure that, you know what, what I went through, I don't want to go through again. This is what you got to do. All right. First off, you got to start off. You have to have some way to cook. Behind me, we have Coleman's, a Coleman stove right over here. Your basic two burner Coleman stove, you can pick it up on Amazon anywhere between 65 and 90 bucks. Just depends on if they're running sales or not and everything else. Now, with your Coleman stoves, I mean, these things are reliable, they're compact. You can take them just about anywhere you want to go. You can throw them in the back seat of a car and go. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they don't take up a lot of room at all. Once that folds down, you're good to go. You just want to make sure that you do have these one pound cylinders. All right, these are great to keep on hand for all different types of emergency situations or maybe just a camping trip or whatever else. But these are what you want to make sure that you do have on hand. We're going to cover something else here in just a second. Now, next to this right here is a Camp Chef oven. Now, I've done reviews on this Camp Chef oven. This is the Mac Daddy of camping stoves, okay? You have a full oven that you can fit a full baking dish in, okay? So you could bake, roast, any of those type of things. Two huge burners right on the top. You know, I mean, this thing is just incredible. It will run on a small one pound tank. But being that it is so big, it's probably not going to last a whole heck of a long time. So here's the remedy. When you are looking to buy a stove or these type of things that run on propane, first thing you want to do is make sure you have extra 20 pound tanks. These are a lot safer to store than gasoline for your generator. So sometimes generators will come where they'll run on gas or propane. Just remember that folks. These things are really safe to store and everything else. And you can store, I have four of them. All right, so it just goes a long way. But what you have to do is, remember this, you have to go and buy one of these adapters. This end goes into the 20 pound tank and this end connects to whatever it is you wanna run on propane. Rather, it's going to be your Coleman stove, your Camp Chef oven, um, maybe your generator, any of those type of things. But you have to have one of these. One of these. Now, this is just a, a four footer. All right. You can get them 10 feet or more. All right. But I just need a four footer. That's all I need. And this way here, you've got some way to power up your stoves. A lot of people are without power. You couldn't run your refrigerator. You couldn't run your freezers. You couldn't do anything. All right. A lot of people didn't have the ability to have a generator. And let's face it, in five feet of snow, it's pretty difficult, right? So this is where you want to make sure you have battery banks. All right. Now, battery banks are, yes, they are expensive. But let me tell you what, folks, they come in handy. You don't have to worry about carbon monoxide poisoning or any of these type of things. All you have to do is make sure you have a solar panel so you can recharge these when they do go down. Even if it is a snowstorm, once the snowstorm is over, you can lay those panels out right on top of the snow if you have to, all right, and plug these bad boys in and they're going to charge. You could probably even put them in your window. It'll be a slower charge, but it would work. Now, I would highly suggest having a few different sizes of battery banks. And here's the reason why. This bottom one is a 1300 watt. This is going to run my refrigerator and my freezer in my house. All right. I can dedicate that just to keeping those things going and the food and stuff staying cold. The top one is a 600 watt. I'm going to dedicate that one 
to recharging my flashlights, recharging my cell phones, uh, laptop, um, radios, anything that can be recharged, that's what I'm gonna do off this bad boy. All right, now, if you do have a generator, and once you have the storm is over, you can always recharge these off your generator. You see what I'm saying? It has multiple ways to charge. These will also charge in your car. So if you're gonna go on a trip, you wanna make sure that you do take a battery bank with you. Maybe you don't have room for a big battery bank, but at least take a 600 watt battery bank with you on your trip, and this way you can charge it while you're driving down the road. You can charge it if you're getting someplace and you put a solar panel out if you do wanna take one of those with you. And you can also charge it by just plugging it into a wall if you stayed at a hotel or any of those type of things. So having some way to have a basic amenities at your fingertips is huge. And not to mention, these little Vaunt lights, I've talked about these things. These are a lifesaver when the power goes out. You can buy these really cheap off of Amazon. Go to my Amazon storefront, they're right in there. You can buy these really cheap. They're nice to have throughout the house in different rooms. So if the power does go out, you know if you walk in there and grab it and just open it, you have light in that particular room. And they don't look bad, they're nice, they're black. They have a nice stainless steel top at the top here. And you can always fold these things down just like this and just set them on a shelf. And this way here, you always have light in whatever room in case the power does go out. So I'm survival preparedness for beginners. I wanna make sure that everybody out there is staying safe, that you have the knowledge to stay safe in your own home when the nasty storms hit, because we just don't know when that's gonna be. But having some way to cook having some way to generate power to keep your refrigerator and your freezer going, or maybe an electric blanket, or whatever it may be that you need to power. You can power it, charge your cell phones, your flashlights, your laptop, your radio, so you can stay informed on what's going on and maybe if help's coming, or whatever the case may be. Because that is the key of the game, folks. The key is to be prepared, not to wait when the storm is already here and wishing you were prepared. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I hope everybody stays safe. You keep prepping. And until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.